Hey everyone, we're gonna go through some must know tips for digital note taking on OneNote for iPad. All right, so welcome to this episode. I'm Nathan Richards. Now, don't forget, if you like what we do, give us a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, click that little bell button, then you're gonna get notified when we keep bringing out great new content. So we're going to look at some tips and let's start with the very first one. So for this one, it's all about making sure everything stays where it's meant to stay. And this is a really basic one and it's making sure that the rotation lock is on for students. So all we have to do is an, on an iPad is up in the top right hand corner where we can kind of see the battery and the Wi-Fi symbol is that we drag and swipe down and we'll see those options. And the one that we're looking for is kind of near to the top there under the Wi-Fi symbol, which is this little lock one. And basically all that's going to do is just stop it from turning and it keeps everything the way that you want the direction to be, which is normally landscape. So the second tip from me is think about having the pens on your students' iPads lined up, ready to go. Normally, if I tap on a pen like this one and open it, we'll notice that there's one, two, three, four, five different sizes. And so what we want to do along the top here is line them up from thinnest to thickest. And that just kind of helps to save time. So what I'm going to do is this one is already defaulted to the thinnest. I'm going to add another pen here and then I'm going to make it the second setting and you know allow your own allow your students to kind of choose choose their own colors and they can quite easily change these if that one's in the way I would normally just suggest to delete the highlighter I can come back and add that later so I'm going to keep adding these in order so this one will always default here on the the, the the middle setting so I'm going to make that one orange and then what I'm basically going to do is push up one I might make that one blue and then I'll push up one more and let's make that one black at the thickest possible setting. The next thing that I might want to do is kind of add in the highlighters and you know normally throw in at least two and but you can you can throw in all of them if you want but I normally kind of suggest this middle one seems to work quite well and then I normally get the students to add the really thick one here at the end especially when it comes to like coloring and shading and colors can be totally up to them. And so all that means is if I just kind of move down here, as I select my pens, you'll see how quick and simple it is for them to just move between the thickness of the pens instead of having to kind of stay on the one pen the whole time and constantly changing between thicknesses. They're just set up there, ready to go, smallest to largest. My third tip would be considering turning on dark mode if it's not already on. If it's on, students can switch between having the white background and the black background. The black background can be super useful if they are on here note taking for long periods of time. That kind of that black background helps with that stress on the eyes. So to do that, what we have to do is come back out and go to settings. Once we're in settings, we wanna come down to display and brightness. And then we'll switch here the appearance from dark from light over to dark. Now it will make the whole aesthetic dark, but this is the only way to turn it on in OneNote. So now when I come back to my OneNote, we'll notice that the background has gone dark as well. And so what will happen here is when I come over to view, is this extra option here comes up this switch background, which is in between spelling and immersive reader. And so I can, as a student, flick between the two. If this diagram suits better to a white background, I can leave it that way. My next tip would be to actively ensure that you place in OneNote activities that get students using their stylus and where the stylus will be a more accurate representation of their work. So for example, something like here in mathematics where we want them to do a reflection, they're going to find it a lot easier to do it with their pen. Or we might want to do something like a matching activity where here they have to draw their lines to kind of match those up together. 
So where I'm making that decision to draw up and mark where my results are. Having those different colored pens along the top will also make that a lot easier because then they can just switch between each one and draw their lines down and it becomes significantly more obvious where their answers are. My next tip would always be to teach them to use the snap to shape tool, especially in a digital note taking place where we want to maybe highlight or bring to our attention important ideas. So if maybe I've drawn something that resonates with me is that over up in the top right hand corner, we're going to select the snap to tool shape. And then I can quite freely just have a go at trying to draw a rectangle, but OneNote will make that nice and neat. Even if I want to kind of come in and make a little star with triangles here, it kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. My last tip is always try to encourage students to draw their ideas, and this may take a little bit of time. Start them off by tracing over pre-existing images. So I might decide to come into insert, and on the iPad we know that we can do online pictures. And so let's say, you know, I was thinking of a concept like um, uh, a flying car and I wanted to sketch that onto the page that I can use something like this. I can use these images and place them on. So I might decide that I'm going to use one of these photos. So I'm going to select it and then wait for it to load up onto the page. But then as a student, what we want to encourage them to do in this world of digital inking is to trace over the top of that. So I'm going to grab out my pen, I'm going to pinch and zoom in so things are as accurate as I can get them, and I'm going to trace around this example model here. So from here I can then go back to text mode, click on the image, and then choose just to delete it. I can then come back in if I want to add a little bit of extra detail to my work. Maybe I need to highlight that there was a wheel there a little bit more clearly, or maybe I wanted to come in to show those flaps that were over the backside of there as well. I can also kind of come into a highlighter. This will work better if you um, switch your modes back over to the clear backgrounds. And then I might decide to switch these around. So I might use a light blue to indicate that this here is the glass or any type of the color differentiations that are sitting on each one. The students then could possibly come in and take that opportunity to label what they have drawn. And so because we have the lines turned on on here, which is probably another really important tip is under view that we come over here and choose that we have the lines on that they can come in and start to label what they have done. And so I can come in here and choose that as well. So those are some of my top ideas for getting started with using the OneNote iPad app for digital inking. I hope you enjoyed them. We'll get down into some more specific ideas and formatting in the future but definitely some food for thought there. We'll see you again soon.